Our project is currently based at the Ohio University of Bochum at the Leibniz Science Campus, Krefon, and it explores the material remains of underground border crossings in South Eastern Europe in the lands of contemporary archaeology. Our presentation today will be about the collection of migrant graffiti uh, that we discovered in isolated or abandoned structures in the no man's land of the Greek Albanian borderland of the Chiltorak last summer. Um, undocumented and forced migration from West Asia, Central Asia, and Africa to Europe reached unprecedented levels in summer and fall of 2015. By the end of that year, over 850,000 people had crossed the land and maritime borders between Turkey and Greece. And looking back at that uh, time, numerous iconic images come to life. You can see here the maritime arrivals and overcrowded rubber dinghies, fall of the two islands, makeshift camps with a large number of tents, and refugee tracks heading to the border of motor world, railways, or railroads. Uh, these images have gradually faded since 2015, 2016, when many journalists have redirected their attention uh, from the humanitarian crisis in the Mediterranean uh, to calamities elsewhere. Nonetheless, forced and undocumented migration to and through Europe continues to exist today, albeit in a hidden and less closely manner. In a recent newspaper article published in Fall 2022, the journalist Paul Middlehoff highlighted that one has to search now for a long time to discern the prevailing hardships faced by white groups, as the dynamics of the border game have become scarcely visible. This is especially true for the land borders of the Greece and Albania, for example. Um, this particular tool for the stages of migratory journeys that unfold beyond the traumatic events uh, at sea, which have captured the attention of global media cameras. For example, the circumstances of force waiting under precarious conditions for crossing the land and maritime borders, uh, as well as the experience in detention centers uh, and the traditional or informal refugee camps, are less well known than the arrival of migrants on the shores of Europe. The anthropologist whom Anderson called these blind spots in media coverage the backroom or backstage verb of violence. Um, at various stages of the journey, people on the move leave behind material traces carrying important information about the actual events. Thanks to its object based uh, research framework, contemporary archaeology offers the opportunity to examine these events, these past ones, by studying the material remnants. Uh, this archaeological approach allows us to investigate recent migration with an ethical temporal distance to the events, ensuring uh, the safety of both migrants and observers. For this reason, archaeology can play an important role in illuminating the backstage worlds of migration. In response to the events in the Mediterranean in 2015, archaeologists and anthropologists started investigating these material remnants of migration. Different European countries, for example, Italy, France, Finland, and especially Greece. Previous research has examined various material aspects of the migration. Particular attention has been given to the very alignment, the material culture of official refugee camps, as well as formal settlements, squads, and alternative shelters inhabited by migrants. Another focal point has been on objects, personal objects, that have special meaning for migrants during the journey and after they arrive in the European country. However, studies in migrant graffiti have been relatively limited. Only two papers in archaeology and anthropology fulfill the deal with migrant graffiti. This research gap is surprising considering that people on the move often leave writings on the walls of buildings that they pass along their routes, uh, temporarily inhabit or are detained. These graffiti are invaluable as they provide first-hand verbal expressions about the aforementioned human words of violence. Um, during the summer of 2022, I conducted an exploratory walk or an archaeological jargon, a pedestrian survey without snack assembly, in the Christmas region along the creek of any border map. We can see water here, and this is the close-up of the map of this area. Um, this remote and deep related mountain area is located at the triple border of East Albania and North Macedonia. The primary objective of the survey was to identify material objects and traces possibly left behind by underwinded migrants traveling on the western barren routes 
to uh, Central Europe. During the survey, I came across two sites covered with hundreds of painted and at size writings predominantly in river experts. To gain a better understanding of the graffiti at this head, to take a brief look into the history of the best possible game. Um, the region's current state of isolation and abandonment is deeply rooted in its history. During the Greek Civil War, which followed the Second World War, the Presbyterian region witnessed major battles between the National Army and the Communist Democratic Army as they competed for a supremacy in Greece. The Civil War had a traumatic impact on the region and caused the predominantly slave uh, Macedonian population to flee to Albania after the defeat of the Communist Party. In the subsequent uh, Cold War era, this whole area uh, was and the Greek state established there a military sort, and this further contributed to the abandonment of the region. Today, the area is part of the transboundary national park that spans Greece, Albania, and North Macedonia. The first displacement during the Greek Civil War unintentionally needed to a positive outcome for nature. The natural landscapes surrounding Lake Prescott is renowned for its dense vegetation and abundant worldwide, including the uh, bears and wolves. However, this remote and untamed mountain landscape can be hostile terrain for people who must drop earth. Here you can see on the slide that, for example, there are traces of uh, bears wandering around this landscape, and uh, here are some migrants walking towards uh, the inner. According to border agency statistics, there's been an increase in migrants, apprehensions, and registrations among the Western Balkans since 2019. To reach Central Europe, migrants are increasingly traversing the wilderness of this natural landscape, facing its dangers. The shift in migration routes uh, is also evident in the material remains found in the borderland of the Presbyterian region. As I walked along the dirt road leading towards Albania, I observed ordinary and seemingly seemingly unremarkable objects scattered on the road or in its immediate vicinity. Only closer examination revealed uh, their connection to clandestine travels of undocumented migrants. I noticed, for example, a few fireplaces, isolated pieces of baggage and clothing, plastic SIM card frames, um, and the packaging of various consumables. And here on the slide, you can see the different objects, the middle of the fireplace, and the different wrappings of consumables. Um, the web is in, indicated use and consumption of different uh, sanitary products and uh, particular provisions. And these groceries range from regular flat bread, pastries, biscuits, and beans, meat, fish, and soft cheese, as well as various beverages, including soft and energy drinks. The packaging of cigarettes and tobacco, you can see here, as they point um, to words originating in Iran, Pakistan, or India. Besides isolated objects on the road, larger clusters of material remains reflecting the migrant flag on the route to Albania were discovered at places which likely served as reservoir waiting sites. One cluster was located around the chapel. This small building may have protected, um, provided protection from the weather, including heavy rainfalls, particularly in this area of peace, even during summer. It was um, precisely at this site where people on the move left their marks on the walls, both outside and inside. Another site that featured graffiti writings was an underpass of a highway, which migrants could also have used as some kind of refuge. In total, we documented at least 250 inscriptions. At both sites, similar techniques and materials were employed to create the graffiti. In rare cases, people have hung their prints on the walls. You can see this here. So it's a Zurich wall, and people just uh, left the handprints, or the widest they actually got uh, the chapels. Uh, graffiti paint with charcoal or incised with scratching device were far more common than these handprints. Within the context of the highway, and the first several wooden sticks with burnt chips were found. And you can see here. Two of those examples. Uh, migrants likely produced them themselves by burning wood in fireplace and used them as whiting tools. As for the decisions, the graffiti writers could have uh, utilized various things. Suitable scratching tools might have been small stones with sharp edges, 
readily available along the dirt road. But it's also possible that people used uh, other materials for scratching. Interestingly, two silica frames, you can see here, um, appear to have been repurposed as uh, some kind of drive or stylus. The world of the highway on the first showcased a minimum of 220 uh, graffiti pieces in Arabic and Latin scripts, predominantly written with charcoal. The actual number of writings was more probably higher, as we identified the graffiti afterwards based on overview photographs, which could not capture the details of faded charcoal joints or shallow decisions. Really, rivalry covered the middle zone of bath and the swords, which corresponded to the area where the riders could comfortably work on without the need for steps or ladder. While some graffiti were overridden or crossed out by others, most whites are positioned in consideration to existing graffiti. The most common graffiti writings on the highway under this are personal names. The names may include both a given name and a shared name. Some examples are have, uh, answered by Shrey, for example, this example, um, with, which distinguishes the graffito from the surrounding writings. The names are frequently accompanied by a date, indicating the moment a person wrote them. Additionally, the names may feature decorative elements showcasing an individual style in a modern sense of graffiti. So here you can see that there are some the creative elements are added for this drawing, for example. Um, in a few cases, uh, multiple names are, names are mentioned together, suggesting that the individuals um, undertook the journey uh, as a group. Another common feature is the reference to an origin place. A single example makes reference to the social media account of the writer. We've been able to identify at least 79 uh, individuals who left their names in the walls of the highway, some cases several times. And these person names are all male. A closer examination of the written dates reveals that the people have been passing through the highway under us since 2020, particularly in summer and autumn. The mentioned places indicate the origin of the individuals. Primarily in commercial cities and villages in Syria, as well as locations in Iraq, Morocco, Egypt, Iraq, and Afghanistan. The greater number of uh, places in the region of Idlib in Syria, here, um, and in the Kurdish region of Syria and Iraq, here, um, may correlate with increased conflict towards the end of 2019. However, the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic might have brought people waiting increased to eat actually as well. The practice of sharing personal information through graffiti, such as full names and contact details, contrasts sharply uh, with the common practice of concealing personal data at the border. The latter practice even leads to the intentional abandonment of passports before crossing the UB border, as migrants hope for a better chance of. Taking asylum status. And so I met also some refugees uh, at the border, and they told me they're all severe from Zia because it's just easier to get the asylum status. Um, it's worth noting that Joanna Bagazzoni and Anya Frank observed a similar phenomenon in the former detention center of Agani in Lesbos. It raises the question of why people on the move use their personal data as graffiti writings, despite the possibility that border agencies use this information against them. Two additional categories of graffiti may shed light on this seemingly uh, contradictory phenomenon. First of all, writings that directly address the border crossing uh, process. So there are several graffiti writings which mention something like that. Okay, the man of three in the middle is passed through here. So it's a connection to the, to the place that they last. These graffiti mentioned on rituals or group passing through the highway on the bus. The fun example uh, specifically referring to the border between Greece and Albania. Second, some graffiti asks the observer to commemorate or remember the person who passed through the highway on the bus. These writings follow a specific formula comprising the press to remember, Fikra in Arabic, the name of the person who commemorated along with the date. 
migrants may uh, might have intended these writings as a means to communicate with future travelers, reminding them about the journey through the borderland between Greece and Albania. In the face of precarity and risk, which are inherent parts of the clandestine travel through the wilderness of the border nature, migrants possibly felt urged to reveal their identity, leaving in mind of their existence in the harsh borderlands. Interestingly, similar inscriptions in Spanish are also found in the border area between Mexico and the United States. Only 350 meters away from the highway, that's a path in isolated chapel of Ivan Glass that exhibited uh, approximately 130 graffiti on the inside and outside walls. Alongside Arabic and Latin scripts, there were also occasional instances of the Tiffany Axe which is used in, uh, for the Babel language of the ancient Northwestern African. The writings cover the Western facade, so this facade here, uh, and the interior rooms of the chapel. In some respect, the scribbling in this chapel differed from those preserved under the high, uh, highway. Like the underpass, the pre domain writings of the chapel consisted of Persian names. They mention at least 46 uh, uh, individuals by name. And based on the dates, it can be concluded uh, that the migrants also visited this location during summers, autumns of 2020 and 2021. In contrast to the highway, the pastor chapel shows the name of three women, and not a single remembrance inscription was found in there. I think it's also interesting to correlate the names, uh, the ring names with the material remains, because I found some, for example, a diapers in front of the chapel, and also some diaper wash prints. That's all for babies are also present at the site. Um, furthermore, half of the locations mentioned in the chapels, uh, the chapel are cities and villages in Morocco, um, followed by places in Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Similar to the graffiti found on the highway underpass, certain inscriptions address the act of border crossing employing expressions of conquest, as well as elements of poetry. So this is a poem, the new art translated from our Tunisian or poet, for example, and also refers to the border crossing process. Furthermore, uh, several graffiti pieces delve into religious themes and reflect on ongoing events such as the coronavirus pandemic. Um, surprisingly, there are only just a few uh, religious uh, themes. So, this, the, the common you know, Salah is mentioned several times, but it's not very often compared to the Muslims, for example. Even at this early stage of research, the Mikan graffiti in the Creek Albania borderland give us important insights into the actions and thoughts of individuals. From the moment I walked through the uh, highway in the past and entered the desert chapel, I was struck by this scribbling. I could not help but imagine people forced to wait whether due to harsh weather conditions or smugglers who promised to guide them through the hostile terrain of the mountains landscape to Albania. And even without comprehending their meaning, I realized at that time that these writings nowhere provided evidence of the clandestine presence of individuals who had best reduced to media statistics in the records of the border agencies. When Noah began translating the graffiti, it was as if the members proclaimed their existence and transformed them to living people. They called out their names, shared their origins, and asked the passersby to remember their unseen journeys. On the one side, uh, the scribblings can be seen as local, spontaneous expressions, creating by using whatever was at hand and faced with the dangers and risks of the untamed remote wilderness of the pre albanian borderland. And on the other side, they reveal a much longer journey guiding people who moved from South or West Asia, North Africa to the Balkans. Although the graffiti left behind by migrants, on and within the Greek Albanian borderland, they witnessed the only small part of this long, long unseen journey. They represent genuine expressions of individuals who remain largely unborn. In this sense, there are files and priest plans into the experience of migrants navigating the black hole known as the Western Balkan group, where people are only often wet. These writings in nowhere demonstrate a migrant's attempt to cope with the circumstances of this same stage of their migratory journeys, and therefore powerfully uh, showcasing their agency. Thank you very much for your attention.
Okay, we're going to wrap up the talk. Are there any questions? All this currently happening with, with the data, um, like you said, because you, you stay yourself, it's a bit contradictory, right? Where they write their names and so on. So, do you think that if she would put this data out there, that this could be the same store one way or one by order? Um, actually, I don't know this. Uh, I was talking with Wendy, a client, about this here, and uh, so she told me most will be never no one would use it, but still I think that I don't want to publish any names or even the exact patients of this place because I think it's it's sensitive and I'm, uh, I want to change this data. And that's also why I just to, to pixel the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very fascinating thought question. Um, my question would be made a mistake, but you mentioned that there were several uh, Instagram accounts I mentioned. Did you ever try to contact them to uh, learn more, more about the uh, story that you found out and think that it was actually? Uh, I want to contact the one, but I'm somehow all fashion, so I don't use Instagram, but it's one of the the folder one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there are also a phone number, it's not only on social media, it's on the rest. So, uh... Basically, something similar uh, to to what you asked. Like, um, did you try to contact them in any way? Because, like, just in Serbia, when they when the migrants are in Serbia, uh, sometimes they are very willing to share their stories, like where they come from, why did they decide to go on this like trip, but they never know if they're gonna survive or not. And uh, there was actually a, a certain photographer who took photos of, of these people and it's published as a book. But um, uh, but he got like really interesting stories as a background. So I was wondering like if, uh, okay, this is a part of archeological research and we deal with material data. And if you have a possibility to actually contact the people, how, how would you approach uh, this part? Like, if you find somebody on Instagram, like, how, how would you approach? Like, what, what would you ask them in relation to this material evidence that you collected? Um, this is definitely a good question. So, uh, one of my and my uh, uh, future steps also that I want to collaborate with technologists. So, person, uh, persons who are trained uh, in taking interviews, because I'm an archaeologist, so I can only do the mature stuff on the lab. Um, and I also, so I had a small project in 2017, we also find a lot of mature stuff on the uh, Turkish border. And for so example, we were asking us, okay, why when people are drinking alcohol or energy drinks, and then we say, maybe it's just because they prepare for the, the water pressing vessels. And then I, uh, I see the same phenomenon in the, the environment, so I counted all the energy trains and also in fact what the fire is so I thought, do we need this energy base to do uh, uh, and I'll pay more attention, whatever, and then I uh, met some, some uh, refugees uh, camping or maybe they were um, in the woods and, and then they were asking, okay, why are you drinking this? And I thought, yeah, it's, it's really reasonable, it's in Canada, it's as well, so that's why we drink. So I think that the interviews are quite a uh, trained essential for any interpretation of where the archaeology will make. Because it's so, uh, sometimes the interpretation is really basic, and one where I still don't put too much interpretation. Mm -hmm. So it's also one of the future aims which I want to follow on the project. Another question? Then I have one. Uh, so um, I noticed that there were kind of like some clustering happening of certain uh, messages left behind. Are you also going to do like a spatial analysis of if they interact with one another, these messages? Um, it's also one of the things which I would like to analyze, but it's a little bit difficult because we do have all these all of you for the press, but I think that uh, sometimes the, the writing direction refers to the position of other writings, and then you connect it to uh, writings with dates. So if you want to follow this, I could uh, reconstruct uh, some of the spread of the work, she new writings in the case it's the high work. So it's also a future game which you like to follow. Well, 
Beautiful. Well, this is just a little technical question. I was curious to know what tool you kind of you use for the visualization of the drawing of the underpass walls. Uh, super basic. So uh, the computer would work and we're there to work with scans of the work and it's then I just in charge of the uh, read on um so I'll get to the same with the message. But I would like to do in several of the message mm -hmm. so it's all the images that that then but in the end, it's also uh, an option experience to say was the cheating of A, well, where it's A and this work, so you will reconstruct what you're reading. You do this one night, just sitting around, like just eye shuttle or whatever, the widens, not that in for, for a regular one. Mm -hmm. 